Hey everybody, it's Lon Sybin, and we're taking a look today at the Samsung T3. This is a portable solid state drive from Samsung. A lot of you saw this when I was doing my uh, Windows on a Mac episode the other day, and I, I actually reviewed this a couple of months ago when it came out, but I didn't really get that review right, and I took it down. So I'm doing a redo on this one, and it's probably more relevant now as there are other drives out uh, in the marketplace now to compare it to, which we will do a little bit later in the review here. Now, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for one of these with my own funds when it came out. I got another one recently through the Amazon Vine program free of charge. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's take a look at the hardware. There isn't much to see here. There's just a single port on it. And this is a USB type C port that you can plug into your fancy new MacBook. Now, the important thing to note here is that some people call these Thunderbolt drives. They are not. They are USB type C drives, but they will plug into a Thunderbolt connector on a Windows or a Mac computer because they also carry USB type C data through the same port. So this will be likely compatible with what you're looking for. Now, when I got these a few months ago, they came with a USB type C to regular USB cable in the box, but no regular USB type C to type C cable in the box. So if you are uh, looking to connect it directly to your MacBook or another device with one of these new USB type C ports, uh, you might have to buy uh, one of these cables to do it with. I'm not sure if that has changed in the months since I first got this, but uh, do keep that in mind if you are looking to do that. Now, there are a couple of different versions of this, at least insofar as capacity is concerned. Uh, so this is the 250 gigabyte model. It sells for $99 right now, which is a pretty good deal. Uh, you can also get a 500 gigabyte version for $169, which is probably the sweet spot for this device at the moment. If you're feeling a little wealthier, you can go for the one terabyte for $349, and they've got a two terabyte in the same little package here uh, for two, or $800. So uh, you can certainly spend a lot, but carry a lot with you. And very solid feeling device. It's all metal, uh, so it is going to hold up quite well when you're out in the field. And again, I really like using these as uh, video editing devices because they really are fast and uh, very, very rugged and a lot more uh, rugged perhaps than a regular spinning hard drive. You just trade uh, capacity for speed here, and in this case, a little bit of ruggedness. But I do like a lot having a lot of these in my bag just because it's really easy and convenient and safer to edit video on this than something else. So I'm going to plug this into my Mac now, and we're going to run a little speed test on it and see how well it performs. So let's get this thing hooked up, and we'll switch over to that speed test in just a second. All right, so we're running the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test right now, and this is what's called a sequential write and read test. We're writing a very large file, about five gigabytes to the drive, and then reading it back and then repeating the process. And uh, what's been surprising to me, I've been running this test now over the last probably 15 minutes or so, and uh, it's been holding very consistent write speeds, which it doesn't always do. And that's one of the weird things with these little drives is that uh, they can get a little inconsistent uh, depending on their caches. And I'm also learning depending on their temperature. There was a great article in a non tech on this uh, particular drive that will go into much more detail than I'm going to go in here, but a really nice primer on some of the challenges of uh, getting these solid state drives to work with consistency. And as you can see here, we're really doing pretty well getting write speeds between 375 megabytes and 400 megabytes per second and read speeds holding very steady around 425 megabytes per second. So really good for video editing and other stuff. Although I think as this drive heats up and gets uh, into maybe a warmer environment or something, we might see those uh, speeds drop off. I've seen that myself in in the field with these things when I'm using them, but uh, under good ideal circumstances like I'm dealing with right now, I think you're going to have a very good sequential write and read experiences with this drive. And I also ran the Crystal Disk Mark test on Windows to see how well it does reading and writing random small 4K files. And we got a score of 21 megabytes per second when we read those files and we could write them back out at about 39.5 megabytes per second, which is a very good speed for random reads and writes, something these little drives sometimes struggle with. So this one uh, is performing about at the top tier of uh, all the little mini SSDs that we have tested. I'll put up a uh, graph here so you can see how it compares with some of the other drives that we have looked at recently. So a uh, decent performance on that test as well. And we also like to take a look at video editing on these little drives. And I've got a multi-camera 4K project here that uh, is keeping uh, two 4K files synced up and streaming uh, onto the screen there simultaneously. And it's doing that without any issues either. So we usually see some lag when these little drives can't keep up. Uh, but this one is doing the 4K editing uh, just fine as well. So overall, I have to say, I think this is a, 
a very good choice for a portable hard drive, especially for video editors as well as probably gamers too. It's a great way to kind of offload your Steam library onto something portable uh, that you might want to walk around with because uh, it is pretty quick on those random reads and writes. In fact, I'm using this as a Windows boot drive for my Mac uh, when I want to boot it up into Windows and play some games on it. So I have my Steam library on it as well as a full Windows installation too that I boot from. And you can see uh, how that works in another video, which I'll link down below in the video description. So all in, the Samsung T3 is a decent little drive that delivers a good amount of performance and definitely worth taking a look at. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.